Hello everyone. Well, today's video documents what was really a bit of a failure, but it was an interesting process nonetheless, so I'll show you what happened. Well, I came across a recipe for making sugar glass. Now, sugar glass was used in the early days of film, well, I suppose up until relatively recently, for the sort of things where you might have a fight and smash a bottle over someone's head or throw someone through a window. I thought it might be nice to incorporate something like that into one of our videos. So I thought I'd have a go at making a sugar glass bottle. Well, to start off with, I've got an actual glass bottle, which I've given a thorough wash and removed the labels from and any trace of glue. And I've got a, a cylinder of cardboard in the top, stuck on with tape. And I've filled the bottle with water so that it's not buoyant. Now, when I was washing the bottle, I carefully removed the labels so that I can reuse them. Uh, I'm using this bottle which was from a, a peach flavoured pear cider. It, it wasn't very nice to be honest, can't really recommend that. I've got a two litre plastic drink bottle here that uh, I'm going to cut the top off as high as I can. Probably better use scissors, but I'm going to use this knife because I can't find the scissors anywhere. doesn't have to be too neat a job. But what we need to do is to suspend the bottle in the remains of the larger bottle so that the bottom of it is about half an inch from the bottom of the other bottle, if that makes any sense. So, probably about there-ish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this kebab stick through pretty near the top uh, by making a couple of holes in this bottle with the attachment on the multi-tool which is intended for removing Boy Scouts from horses hooves. strong it's not strong enough to support the weight of the bottle so I think I'm gonna to have to reinforce that perhaps with some tape Inside of this plastic bottle is thoroughly dry. Next, I've got this uh, mold release wax, uh, which I believe you can just spray on. Uh, it says one to two coats. Um, it is quite nasty, so you don't want to be spraying it about too much and then you just leave it to dry, so let's try that. I'm also going to do the bottle. Put it all 
together while that dries. So it's all hanging nice and evenly. As you can see, there is some um, beading, there's some solvent in this which needs to evaporate off. So I'm going to leave that until that's dried off a bit more. Right, so, well, uh, that wasn't really drying very quickly, so I, I just gave a bit of a wipe with some paper towel because uh, I was getting impatient. I think it should be fine. I didn't wipe the bottle, the bottle didn't have that beading on it. I think I sprayed a little bit too much inside the plastic bottle. But uh, it is important to have the releasing agent on the glass because I think this can react with silica. So we definitely need the release agent on the glass. So hopefully it'll be okay. Now I think I need to use the whole tub, I reckon. I'll mix up the whole tub. It's been supplied with uh, the catalyst at the right amount. So that means I don't have to weigh anything out. And uh, so that I don't muck up any of Nikki's cooking equipment, I'm going to use my lunchbox to mix it up in. It is quite nasty stuff, so I'm going to wear some gloves and some safety glasses while I do it. Fold it all together, it's quite gloopy. It's that easy to get it all thoroughly mixed. It's getting there though. I guess it probably wants to be a nice, even pink colour. Worried about my lunchbox. We'll survive this operation. Right, that seems reasonably well mixed now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to change gloves. Ugh. Let's pour it in. look like I'm going to have enough does it? I think this stuff is really good at sticking to itself so I can always order some more and leave this as it is perhaps. That's a shame. So, well, I'm back and I've got some more of this silicon rubber. Now, you'd have thought there'd be enough of this because it's smaller, well, this is smaller diameter than that, and this is about the right height. So, there should be enough to fill that, but obviously, there wasn't quite enough there before, and really, with the bottle taking up the room, you'd have thought it would get higher than that. So given that this cost me 20 pounds, I've always put 20 pounds worth in there, so this is gonna cost me 40 pounds just to make the mold by the time I finish. It's 15 pound plus four pound 95 postage, I think. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a card cone to go over here to bring the sides in a little bit I don't need this thickness of rubber at the top. Just save some of this and make sure I've got enough. I guess that's kind of the effect I was going for. You may have first seen the mould release stuff actually soaked through the card a little too much and made the silicone lose its grip. So uh, I think that was probably quite predictable, wasn't it? Should have thought of that. Anyway, I think that'll hold right that. So I'm gonna go and get some gloves and we'll mix up another batch of this silicon. 
Got me some gloves, let's crack on, eh? All of this out this time. Maybe I didn't get it all out last time. I reckon I didn't mix up enough last time because I probably left all that I realised in there and in the bottom of this lunchbox. I'm thinking there should be enough in here to fill that up. I'm going to take this out. Might regret it, but I reckon we've got more than enough here effort to get it all out of the pot. This is nicely mixed up. I'm just going to leave that to set now. You can see there is a line, a slightly different colour, for this batch and the last batch. I'm hoping that will adhere nicely to the previous silicon. I kept it dust free by putting the cling film over the top and it says it does stick to previous layers of silicon. So let's hope so. Otherwise we'll end up, I guess, with a four part mould, which might be a bit tricky to manage, but Let's see how it goes. Well, I tell you, well, that's set quite nicely. As you can see, there are two different colours in it. Anyway, now it's time to cut it open and see what we've got. Now, I'm going to use a nice sharp knife to do that. And I've got to do it really in one go because I don't want multiple cuts. We're a nice, even cut. So uh, let's see if we can do that now. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the top of this cardboard tube so I can empty the water out of the bottle that's still in there from the first session we had casting. I'm going to use this permanent marker to mark some nice lines so I know where to cut to. That's to be too precise, but uh, I want to make it reasonably neat. This is more just to make sure I do cut on opposite sides. Right, I need the other blade, I think, for this. I was thinking of using a standing knife, but uh, unfortunately this depth is deeper than a standing knife would go, so I'm going to have to use this blade here. I want really to keep this plastic bottle in two halves as well. I don't want to muck that up, so. Quite tough. So what? I'm going to get the plastic bottle off first. cut right down to the very bottom. The idea is we might be able to peel it apart a little bit to get the bottle out and that will help it now go back together again as a mould. So I'm not going to cut right around the bottom if I can help it. This is working I think. Job like this, make absolutely sure you're not 
cutting towards yourself, so if you slip, you stab yourself. our lovely bottle mould. The food bubbles in the bottom of it but I don't think that's going to really matter. It's uh, after Christmas now and it's time to get back onto this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the inside of this with some mould release and tape it up. First thing I'm going to do is add about 830ml of sugar. I'm not sure I've got enough here, but uh... do it. It's supposed to be light corn syrup, but I couldn't find any, so I've got this agave syrup, which is quite expensive, but uh, there's 250ml in here. So I'm going to need to use almost all of it. I'm looking for about 230 mil. You alright? That's breathing. Now corn syrup is clear but this is like a golden colour so maybe this will give me a more browny glass, don't they? Hopefully it will work though. Right, now I need the same amount of water. It's about and I'm not the same amount of water, I need about 470ml of water. These are instructions I found on the net, so let's hope they work. And then I need a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Bring it to the boil too quickly. I'm gonna give it a little stir while it heats up. Now what the aim is is to get that mixture to 300 degrees Fahrenheit which you can see it says um, hard crack on my candy thermometer here. So when I get it to that temperature I can cast the bottle. Right, it's uh, just starting to simmer. Well, no, it's boiling away reasonably nicely. I don't think it'll be anywhere near ready yet, but let's uh, just check it with the thermometer. Yeah, we're only just really over 100 degrees, 220 Fahrenheit-ish. Well, of course, we're not using one of Nikki's best saucepans for this. We're using a cheap one that I bought for eight quid from Morrison's just in case we muck it right up. Well, I've just checked again and we're up to about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we're easing over 220 degrees now and we're heading up to the thread mark. Well, while that's heating up, it's worthwhile preparing a little bit. I've put the cardboard box in the sink and I've got my mold inside this jug so it doesn't tip over. And I've got the funnel into the top of the mould already because uh, when this gets to 300 degrees it's not the sort of stuff you want to spill anywhere near your skin because it will uh, burn right through you I reckon. Well the temperature is uh, really creeping up slowly now we're probably only four or five degrees warmer than we were before so I'm just 
putting a little bit more gas into it, see if we can build the heat a little bit more quickly. Don't want to go too fast though, or we might caramelise the sugar. That's a real job to get the required heat into this, so I'm going to try for a little while with the lid on. Well, it's been another 10 minutes or so, and we're still stuck at this thread mark. I'm going to uh, take off the lid, which should allow me to put a bit more heat into it, I think. Because uh, we've got a way to go to get to um, 300, haven't we? Yeah, this is definitely not a game for an impatient man. It's uh, just starting to ease over that soft ball setting, which I think is probably about 240 Fahrenheit. Yeah, as it gets hotter, it gets more and more unruly. And it's a job to stop it from boiling over. You have to keep putting a metal spoon in it to bring the bubbles down. Right, well because it's taken so long, I've swapped with Nikki's permission to a much larger pan. And the hope is I can boil it away in there without it bubbling and overflowing quite so easily. That's better looking and properly uh, hubble bubble it. Oh wow, look at this, we're uh, already up to the soft crack uh, mark. We just need to get to where it says hard crack. Should have tried this sauce for ages ago. This is much better. I can really whack the heat up and it doesn't boil over. Right, well we're now up to hard crack temperatures. So I'm going to add some of this to my mould. Don't think the funnel idea is really working. I'll just pour it straight in. Now what I want to do is rotate it round so it gets everywhere in the mould. Right, I'll leave that to cool down. Right, well this is cooled down now so I guess it's time to unwrap it find the end of this tape I wouldn't say it was perfect. It feels a bit sticky. I wonder if it's that agave um, syrup that has made it a bit sticky. Yeah, I think although this looks okay, it's really not suitable for use. You can see the base is far too thick and it really is horribly sticky. So it's got a small hole in it there, which uh, is a bit of an imperfection. I think the problem was that agave syrup. We should really try and find some proper light corn syrup and that might make it less sticky. I think there's also a bit of a mistake cooling it with water as well. That really just dissolves some of the sugar and made a horrible sticky mess. So uh, yeah, needs a second attempt really. Oh, it's some time later and I have managed to get through the post some light corn syrup which is completely clear. I'm going to try it again, doing exactly the same, but using this in place of that agave syrup. Well, I've uh, completed the exercise and this is the result. It's uh, not too bad. It's a little bit yellowish and the bottom is still quite thick. I think probably it might serve better next time to dry it upside down. 
But I'm quite pleased with it. It's nowhere near as sticky as the previous one. It's a little bit deformed. That mould is a little bit too floppy. Probably need to make up some sort of frame to hold it absolutely rigid. And the top is a little bit scrappy, but I think in a sort of a distant shot, it would certainly pass muster. Right, time for some testing. Now I'm going to enlist the help of Mr. Safety Owl. Well, that was a bit disappointing, wasn't it? As you can see, the bottle did break at the neck and it cracked quite convincingly, a bit like glass, but only really broke on one side, then the other half sort of flopped down. And I think the reason for that is that the bottom of the bottle was really quite thick. Um, I did empty it out and rotate it, as you saw in the process, but I think when it was standing cooling, more material flowed down to the bottom and made the bottom quite thick and heavy which meant that it was more robust so it broke at the weak point at the neck rather than shattering convincingly in a more dramatic way. I also think that you really need to use these bottles almost as soon as you've made them. I do think it probably would have worked better if I'd done it the same night that I made it we tested it with Mr. Safety Owl the following evening and by then it had got noticeably more sticky. I think being sugar glass it is quite hygroscopic so uh, it does attract the moisture and become steadily more sticky and gooey as time goes on. So I think if you're going to do this you need to make it and then use it within a few hours. So with that in mind, I haven't entirely written off the idea and I might have another go at some point, but I think I'll draw a line under it for the moment and get on with something else. Of course, nowadays in films, if they are going to do this for real and not have sort of special effects computer stuff, they use like a very thin plastic bottle which breaks like glass. They're quite expensive to buy, they're about £25 each, so uh, it is worth trying to make bottles yourself, although it probably cost me 40 quid to make the mould. But obviously if you're going to make multiple ones, then you've got that mould forever, you can easily reuse the mould. So anyway, uh, a reasonably interesting experiment, but uh, not spectacularly successful. You're effectively making like a giant boiled sweet. Perhaps you could preserve it for a little bit longer by wrapping it in something instead of leaving it open to the air. But uh, I haven't tried that so I can't really confirm that. Anyway, it was an amusing little project. Unfortunately Mr Safety Owl did have to have a turn in the washing machine after that because he's rather sticky and he's a bit disgruntled about that. But he's dried off now and he's getting over it I think. Well that's all for now. If you enjoyed it, press like, subscribe if you want to see some more, and ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new.